Ladies and gentlemen, every year the city of Delft is under attack. Under attack, didn't the war end it 66 years ago? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it did. But Delft and many other places on the world will re always remain under attack. They are under attack by the evil twins. The evil twins, wind and water. Wind and water attack in the guise of high levels of groundwater, rain, flooding, high tides. And when the weather comes, there is no place to hide. Water can take everything. People, animals, bridges, railroads, as we all witnessed during the tsunami in Japan last March. Southwest Holland has its own flood disaster in 1953. Over 1,800 people drowned. I lived there, and it was a little tyke of three. And our family was greatly affected by this destruction. Because when the weather comes, and it has nowhere to go, canals burst out of their banks, homes are flooded, and roads become impossible. For the city of Delft, the trouble with water began ages ago, even before it was incorporated as a city. That was in 1246. In in 1289, the Delfland Water Board was established. Now, what is a water board, you may ask? No, it has nothing to do with waterboarding. But yes, water can be a torture when it floods the land and people feel their feet getting wet or worse. A water board is a democratic elected governmental organization. And I was appointed president to one of these water boards in the Netherlands, Hoogheemraadschap van Delfland. From the olden days until now, they govern the system of water regulations. This is of vital importance in the lowlands where 40% of the land lies below sea level. A complicated and sophisticated system of drainage, dikes and pumps keep the land dry so farmers can farm and crops can be harvested and the roads are fit for driving. The regional water boards are responsible for keeping the water out and keeping the waterways functioning. But when the water boards are in negotiation, no one can leave the table. This is where the term polderen came from. Keep talking until everyone is in agreement. A lengthy and cumbersome process. Delft grew from a small settlement to a city because of its complex water management system. The system goes back to the 13th century. It transported the superfluous water away from the city. It worked well till the end of the 20th century. Then, during the 90s, parts of Delft began to sink, just like Venice. This came about because of the build, new building developments. It started to build on soggy ground and swampy land beyond the city center. And then the ground started to shift. And when it rained, the canals overflowed. Basements and roads flooded. Plus, the overflowing sewage system created all kinds of problems. You can say a dangerous situation indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, these kinds of floods are not limited to the city of Delft. They happen in many cities located in delta areas, as Jakarta, Hong Kong, 
but also Hoboken, Rotterdam as well in Bangkok. Everywhere cities are exposed to high tides, water and wind. And if there, if there is no place for the water to go, then you get in trouble. But the city of Delft, where the celebrated Delta Plan was developed after the flood of 1953, it is home to a great many engineers and creative thinkers. We in Delft needed a solution, and we need it now. It was a top priority. There was no time for research because the situation was urgent, very urgent. But the obvious solution was to build a dike and create another polder to receive the surplus water. But Delft, as one of Holland's well-preserved historical cities, is a magnet for tourists. The historical character must be preserved at all costs. And Delft couldn't accommodate the construction of a dike in this historical centrum. That was a no-no. The challenge was to combine the preservation of the old city, the tourist industry, and effective water management. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how the city of Delft, the water board of Delftland, the engineers, and the innovation specialist found a creative solution, an upside-down solution, because we had to think differently, and we did it. We thought upside-down, because environmental changes require creative solutions, and traditional ways of thinking must let me go when they no longer work. During a process of close uh, cooperation, we agreed to, one, build a horizontal sluice gate instead of the usual vertical one. And this gate can be erected in a vertical position in case of emergency. And then it protects the inner city against flooding. You can say it is a, beautiful, a sleeping beauty on the bottom of the canals. And secondly, create an underwater pumping station to pump away the surplus water that falls from the sky. With both measures, we create a new type of polder, and we call it the first urban city polder. And this city polder is invisible. The historical character of the city remained intact, and the high-tech system is hidden from view. It can be called upon when the situation warrants it, in times of high winds and high water. A creative solution, upside down thinking. And it worked. Last September, we had to activate the system again, and it came through with flying colors. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to share what we learned with other cities that are in the same boat all over the world. So the residents of these deltas can keep their feet dry during those times that the evil twins, wind and water, are under attack again. Thank you.